Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Government is reviewing the current framework through which electricity capacity is procured from independent power producers. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the reasons for the review and what changes are being considered. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Why has this review been deemed necessary? Well, ever since the procurement of renewable energy, publicly procured renewable energy, restarted after quite a long hiatus from about 2014, when the then Eskom leadership, which was during the peak of state capture, said, no, we've got sufficient capacity, we don't need these IPPs, and we're not going to sign contracts. So there was a big gap. But since it resumed um, uh, in around 2019, there, it hasn't been that successful. There's been a number of issues that have come to the fore. Now, this was a bit of a, a shock because from 2011 to 2014, you know, th that became the global template almost for the rest of the world doing these reverse auctions. And it became the way people started to procure NNPP electricity. And South Africa was held up as a model. So when things were starting to fail, uh, it opened our eyes to what, what, what are the issues. And a number of issues changed, I think, from 2014 to when it resumed. I think the big thing was around the grid. The grid constraint came to the fore. The early rounds it was still small. It was, um, wasn't a lot of penetration of renewable energy wind inside of the Eskom was able to connect that. Um, and I think also the, it brought to the fore not only the grid issues, but the philosophical issues at Eskom around, you know, do we allow for curtailment, uh, for instance, which all the rest of the world has been doing for many, many years. We hadn't really set a proper framework in place, although there is curtailment with the existing fleet of electric uh, renewables anyway. But we didn't have a proper framework for that, so we limited what grid capacity was around, uh, available. And then there were so many other balls in the air that the capacity, I think, within Eskom around the grid access unit uh, was quite stretched. So this became a major bottleneck. And we've, there's been attempts under new to formulate new rules for that. Um, but basically, that's still, become, still a major bottleneck. And then obviously we've had rounds where they were really affected by external forces. So bid window five in particular, the bids came in, technology costs were falling. Suddenly we had COVID lockdowns. We had the Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It changed the dynamics around the pricing for components of wind and soda for that period. And a lot of those projects, because we had aggressively been reducing the tariffs being bid, that was sort of the the sort of mindset, so very aggressive tariffs, but suddenly you couldn't get those components, those wind and solar components at those prices. Your project was underwater, so a lot of projects failed to reach commercial close. And then we had the risk mitigation round, which was just purely, uh, I think, poorly designed, and only very few projects got through that round. And then we had bid window six, where the grid issues really came to the fore, and the lack of a curtailment framework. If that had been in place, I think the wood projects, uh, wooden projects that were bid for that 3,200 megawatt allocation would have gone through quite a few of them. We didn't have that framework in place, so those got put onto the back burner and were, were never procured. And uh, just generally, there's been difficulties now with bid window seven in now in place, just getting through those bid windows. Um, it's just not working as it should. What are some of the changes being considered? Well, I think the first thing is the curtailment framework. So allowing, uh, to looking at the grid and looking at using the grid uh, differently in that connection, not saying that it's absorbed when it's actually not really absorbed. If you allow for, say, something like 10% curtailment, it suddenly unlocks a lot of capacity in the Western Cape, in the Northern Cape, in the Eastern Cape that is said to not be there. And it would help, and it is best practice around the world. So that... Uh, has been slow in coming, but Eskom, to its credit, has put in a, a clear curtailment framework which is supported. It's just that the regulator still has to approve that. So that, I think, will help immediately. I think the other things that are being considered are regional bidding rounds. So because of the grid uh, connections being so constrained, you know, maybe having specific allocated rounds, say, to Mpumalanga, where grid's not the problem, but you know, if the Pumalanga wind project competes with a, a Western Cape wind project on a price, it's going to be difficult because it, the wind resource is just that much better in the Northern or the Western Cape than in Pumalanga. But we're getting good wind resource results 
as people are testing it, but it's still not at that level. So if you have a regional procurement, then it's a like for like, and uh, you can therefore have tariffs that are more reasonable um, for, the, for the developers to go ahead. And, it, and you know, given the grid constraint, what it's going to take to build, one, it's going to have the, the time value of money because you're just not going to be able to build anything, but also it already exists, so you don't have to build the new substations, your power lines. It will be modest in, in terms of what you need to build. So I think there's that sort of thing. Also, the size of the bit windows. I think you know the minister came in wanting mega rounds. Every mega round's been a bit of a disaster. I think having smaller, more frequent rounds is what the, the industry needs. So that you have a consistency, visibility, visibility of pipeline, more um, con contestation around those rounds rather than throwing everything into one big mega round. I don't think you're going to get very good pricing outcomes. So I think things like that, and then I think around this grid access point, it's a real pinch point. I don't know what the solution is, and it's becoming probably worse because it's not only public procurement that's happening now. We've got private PPA projects. So everyone's uh, putting their project into the grid access unit. But something has to give there. Some new framework has to come through because the real problem, also the way it's formulated, for instance, private projects having to have firm PPAs when some of these projects are going to be wheeled to multiple customers. It's, it's just, it's really not fit for purpose. Something has to give there uh, and something much better. So I think the positive is that there's a view, there's an awareness that it's not working as it should. Uh, whereas we're seeing a lot of the private projects crossing the line, the public ones, which are, it's important to continue with the public at this stage uh, because we, the Electricity Regulation Act, which is going to usher in a, a multi-market, a competitive market, maybe all the, the difference between public and private will all evaporate in time. But at this stage, we, we, we need both. So really, we need to get the public um, uh, engine working, and it's really not at the moment. Will these changes be enough to avoid the failures of the recent past? I think that is the big question because uh, every design has its consequences and you think you've got a silver bullet and it turns out it, uh, it doesn't quite work. So it's very much, you know, I think engaging with the people that are, that are bidding, uh, the, peop the practitioners in this round. I think the RPP office has got a lot of experience which I think can be drawn on there. Uh, Eskom needs to speak to them around their grid access units and the way it works and the rules there, but also speaking more to the industry and getting a sounding board, you know, what is going to work, what's going to make this attractive again to bid in and, and what is also going to make it, you know, at the moment we've got a bit of a race to the bottom type mentality, get the least cost, but it's a 90-10 system where 90, the weighting of the evaluation is 90% valuated on price, which I think is good because you want as low electricity as uh, priced electricity as possible and it's been very beneficial. You've seen the prices come down from bid window one to to bid window four, five, you know, really coming down um, very aggressively. It's been good. But we've got all these other social uh, and industrial ambitions around these pro programs. So the least cost, uh, maybe creating some margin for premium uh, to allow for the industrialization, particularly around um, around this, what's going to be a consistent rollout of wind and solar for many, many years. As I say, it might not be through bid windows in the future when we have a much more competitive, a much more market-oriented uh, uh, um, in electricity economy. We're not quite there yet, so we're still in this grey area where we have to have these bid windows. But I think, uh, so th you know, it's, it's, it's about communication and asking people what can work and listening to them. And I think there's been a lack of that in the past. So what's going to work? What is the silver bullet? I can't really tell you, but there's definitely a need to change. And some of those elements, I think, um, around the, the, the grid access, maybe regional bidding rounds, smaller rounds, more frequent rounds, those sort of things seem to make sense to me. But we'll have to wait and see what comes up in the next few weeks around the, the next bidding, bidding round and how government's going to approach it. But it can't stay as it is. There's definitely a problem with uh, the publicly procured renewables at this stage. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.